Hi, America. Welcome well, to Angel and the Wiz. Welcome to Angel and the Wiz, an insignificant program that goes out to those few people that are strange enough to appreciate it. Greg Gutfeld, who is on Fox, does a show called Red Eye. And I sent him an email the other day telling him, but not, not telling him, just letting him know that I was the guy that pioneered and cut the path so he can do the show that he does now. Because in, there was nothing like what we did in the 70s before us ever on television. And he does like a, he does that kind of a show. Did you ever uh, watch Crossfire on CNN? I used to, but I don't like people to talk over each other. To me, it's you know, incredibly, I back. hate it. Yeah, it's coming back. Who the hell wants to listen Maybe to that? I can't stand it. just supposed to be the host. You know, can like I tell that. you something? I don't, I don't, I don't like that. And when Howie Kurtz came from CNN, and can I tell you, boy, Fox News has picked up a wide selection of the best people. You know, really, really, and, and like they leave those stations to come to Fox. Howie Kurtz was on CNN. And he had a show, and he, it was like a news review. It was like a media news review show. Now he's doing it on Fox. But the first time he was on a special report, he was the old Howie Kurtz. And he talked over people and everything else, and he didn't fit in at all. And I'm sure that mine wasn't the only one, mm -hmm. but my email went that night right there, and I said, you know, we don't need this. This is not how we have courtesy on this station. We do not overtalk people. We blah, 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 blah. And the next time I saw and then he wasn't on for a while. The next time I saw him on Special Report, he got gotten a so message. Here's, here's, Some producer spoke to him and said, Howie, this is not what okay, we do. Okay, so let's talk... Uh, I know they made some changes. So have you watched the new Fox and Friends in the morning with the Elizabeth, whatever, that used to be on? Hasselbeck? Is yeah. she on yet? She's, I think she's on now. Oh, I didn't think she, she started she... yet, because I watch it every morning as I'm waiting to go to work. Okay. <coughs> I haven't seen her yet. I thought she was supposed to start like August 1st. Okay. Well, that, well, maybe she's not started yet. Yeah, they have a, they have a, Gretchen has been on, and uh, another girl has been on, but the, yeah, because I was waiting for her to go, gone, because I think she'll be really good on mm -hmm. it. You know, she, you know, she impresses me. Is uh, that, have you uh, watched any Al Jazeera? No, just why to would check I? It out? Oh no, Al I have not. Jazeera I, America. It's like when you watch that person who lies every time he speaks. It's not necessary to unmute anymore when he speaks, because every other time he has spoken, he has lied. So there is no reason to listen to him anymore, or for the next three years. Right, so okay. uh, how, does that, how is that related to Al Jazeera? Because I know what they provide. Uh -huh. They provide a point of view. But you know the one good thing that could happen with Al Jazeera, if they're smart? There's going to be times when, just like Putin came out and said, Putin, of all people, you know, and of course all they can say is, well, he's a liar, he's a liar, he's a liar. He came out and he said, Kerry's lying. He says, this was not Assad that did it. It was the rebels that did it to make to get the sympathy of it. And then and now there's some documentation that makes it look like we even knew that it was them that did it, you know? And uh, this, this dates the show. Well, I just the, have to say, given that, that I'm really glad that there wasn't a miscommunication, I don't know, that, that Obama didn't jump into let's strike Syria. I know he wanted to, but then he also backed away. He does what Valerie, Valerie Jarrett right, tells well, him. Well, whatever she, whoever she is. Okay, whoever she is. But I, you know, <coughs> I'm glad me. that he didn't just jump in because, you know, as much as everyone might have loved Bush, for, he did mislead us and, you know, with I, with going into Iraq. And Why? You can't, how can you mislead us how? With the, with, with I, the I, weapons I, of mass destruction? Yes. That they watched leave in trucks to Syria? And they are now in Syria. Which is maybe very well the case. But it is the case. It's what happened. And anybody that took the time to find it, we yeah. knew it then. Just like the thing with Diana. Wow. We haven't Diana. talked about Diana. Remember Princess Diana? Uh -huh. Died in that accident? Well, when that accident originally happened, the first scuttlebutt that went around, the first rumor that went around, was that they killed her because they did not want the potential king of England being born with an Arab. Okay? And they were not going to let that marriage go through with Dodi Fayyad. Okay? And and that that they, when they went I into that, that tunnel, her children would not because she was not direct royalty. If she had, any I know other I children. understand that, but from the, this, I'm giving you from okay. their point of view. Okay, <clears throat> so she was still Princess Diana, even though she was no longer. Okay, so when when it, when the story, when it originally happened, 
the story was that, and they tried to blame it on Paul Henry, that, that he was drunk and everything else. We've all seen the videotape, suddenly he wasn't drunk, he wasn't drunk. Okay, so, you know, what do you believe, yourself or your lying eyes? You know what I mean, that right. kind of thing. Okay, when he went into the tunnel, the story then was that when they went into the tunnel, there was a white Fiat in front of them that set off a flare so he couldn't see, and that's how the accident happened, okay? And the fact that it took a, an exceptionally long time for the uh, ambulance to arrive, and then it didn't leave right away. I mean, they made sure she was dead, okay? Now, just recently, a soldier has come forward and recounted a more specific but ex almost identical version of how that was done. And he, he told it to his family, and, and so I mean that was and so it was just fascinating to hear that. It was I didn't mean to get off the beaten track. Oh no, but, it's okay. You know what I, I mean? don't mind but, uh, conspiracies. <clears throat> well, you know, and remember, get, keep in mind, kids, okay, that uh, when they use the term conspiracy theory, nine times out of ten they're saying that to belittle the person who is telling you the, the truth, truth right. that they don't want you to have. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I ooh. just I know I was too young. To really understand, I just know that she had died. I was right. six, what happened? It happened in '96. Well, yeah, I guess. I'm I was like, I don't know. 16, 15 or 16 when it all happened. Maybe 17. I just, you know, I, I just wasn't. I, I knew. Who's that a student she, of 16? I, I knew that she died. Yeah. But who? who yeah. You know, Why? How? You bought more, the story like everybody else. Well, yeah, you're more interested in the entertainment. You become fascinated with the more of the entertainment. Right. Which is sad to say, aspect of it instead of right. the r real or pol political side of it. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. See, so. saying, speaking of which, let's just take a second. Okay. Um, because it's early on, I just want to get out of this. <coughs> Excuse me. Low information voter time, politics 101. Last week we talked about voter ID. Yes. This week I wanted to share with you again. Know yourself. Find out what things you truly believe in. Don't fall into that pocket of people that you can be told something. Look at all the hubbub that was raised, and I know that I'm going to step in it, but let me still use this because it's an illustrated example for politics, okay? This was not a political thing, but it's a, it shows you what manipulation is. Anybody that watched the trial of Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman, knows that Trayvon Martin contributed to his death, whether we like it or not. His culture helped get him killed because he, he picked up the patterns, acted in the ways. Mm -hmm. they, he, he, did, he didn't do anything. That, George Zimmerman has never confronted anybody ever. Okay, He didn't want to confront Trayvon Martin. Look at his history. He was a guy that called the cops. I, I live with a guy like that, Mr. Laspina. You could cross Mr. Laspina and you would never know it was him that was sending the fire inspectors and the building inspectors. <laughs> and, I mean, you never came in contact with him, but let me tell you, it didn't cross him because he had everybody's phone number. Well, that's how George Zimmerman was, okay? And what's the point of it? It's not about Trayvon Martin. It's not about George Zimmerman. It's about being misled and misused for somebody else's purpose, okay? And when it comes to politics, it's very important that you know what you like and what you believe and what you truly see. Because most politicians present the story from their point of view, mm -hmm. okay? And they don't say, in my opinion. They stand up and they say, this is a fact. Th it's your fact. It's true. So what I'm trying to encourage you is don't just accept things because some politician tells you it's true. Take the time to find out yourself or realize that you are limiting you. Your choice to not find out more is limiting you. And if you allow people to tell you that this guy is bad or that guy is bad, you belittle yourself. You limit yourself. You become a low information voter. Okay, and if you're going to take the time to vote, you should know what you're doing. You know, there's a little bit of responsibility that comes with voting. We don't just go vote because we could do it. You know what I mean? Why are why are <clears throat> excuse me? So many so many minorities are being hurt by us giving them money 
rather than showing them how to get their own money. We're enslaving them. That's what's happening. You know, when the government gives you a check, it takes something back for that check. You know what it takes back? Taxes. It takes back your will to do something on your own. Taxes. It takes from you your initiative. Taxes. It takes from, that we know that, it takes, <laughs> takes from you your personal pride that comes when you have your own job. I watched Dave again the other day with Klein, whatever his name is, Kevin Klein, whatever. And one of the points that he tries to make is he wants to have a jobs bill. And the point that he makes is, you ever seen the pride in somebody when they accomplish something on their own? Okay? And that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Don't, the easy way is not always the right way. It's the easy way. And, it, there, and listen, <clears throat> I should be running the show The Devil Used to Be on this song. <laughs> I should show this song. I'm not tonight. This week we have the Raptor. But the point that I'm trying to make is, Nothing is free. And things that are easy are not always the best choices. You know, sometimes failure teaches you strength. Sometimes overcoming adversity makes you bigger and better than you were before. Okay? Sometimes failing is a benefit. Okay? Because it's just, you know, failing is not forever. Failing is one specific thing. Oh, I failed on this. Oh, and that's horrible. What did I learn? I learned that if I do that, I'm going to fail. So next time, I'm going to do this. Whoa! You see what I mean? So you can't look as, at failure as defeat. Failure nine times out of ten is one specific thing. Okay? And if you're having a tough time and you're getting assistance, I don't, I don't, I'm not putting down assistance. I'm putting down maintaining Dependency assistance. Upon Dependency. The, like, Absolutely I get that. right. I get, like the you know <clears throat> you need assistance. Sometimes there's bumps in the road, and sometimes you need some help yes. to get over those bumps. That's and right. I understand and I respect that. And it's humbling when you <clears throat> have to ask for help. Right. But you also have you can't become dependent on always having that help. And, and some, people have been, and that's frustrating. And something else too. I don't know if this is still politics 101, but the fact of the matter is. The great society, all that war on poverty and all that stuff, destroyed families. Because you didn't have to... You know what people used to do when they had a problem? They went to their aunt, or their uncle, or their father, or their mother, or their brother, or their sister, or somebody that they knew, somebody that knew them, somebody that might trust them. Okay? And the family, as a unit, worked together. Okay? That's not what we have now. We don't bother with the family, we go to the government. And that's why we have a single parent families, and I don't care what anybody says, there is something to be benefited from a two parent family. There's a soft and a hard, there's a, uh, and it doesn't matter who is which, male or female, there's two points of view. Just having that, because everybody's different. You know what I mean? And even people that get along together don't agree on everything. And that helps you become a better person. What I'm trying to tell you, America, is too many people are relying on the government. They're not becoming self-sufficient. That's Europe, okay? That's not here. We are self-sufficient. Why have we become the, the greatest country on earth? Why do we have standards of living that other people just wish for and this guy in the White House hates, okay? Because we were self-sufficient. We didn't rely on the government for handouts because you see what, other ha what else happens? If you rely on the government for handouts, you never move any faster than that. And your growth and your initiative and your learning and your growing ends. Do you know what happens to an alcoholic or an addict? When they become addicted, their emotional growth stops. Stops. It ends. And until they get out of that addiction, it never proceeds any further. Okay, and that's why you can see a 30-year-old acting like a 16-year-old or a 40-year-old. I want what I want when I want it. Okay, we got a people, a lot of people elected like that. Okay, <laughs> <clears throat> and the emotional growth stops. That's what happens when you become a retainer of the government. Your growth stops. Maybe not your emotional growth, but your 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 will, your desire, your hopes, your dreams. Everything is shut down because you can't see past that next check and it happens to all of us anybody that falls into that thing and just like uh, Tink said that 
nobody is against getting help. We're against depending on help. We're, we're, we're against allowing that help to limit you and what you can do. You know, it's, it's you know, anyway. So, okay, so that's it. That's my politics I'm, for this week. I'm interested to see who's going to be running for president in the next, you know. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm really interested to see that. I can't, I'm actually, I'm kind of looking forward to this next election. Uh -huh. Um, I really, the, I, the one, and a very the, important 2000, the 2008 two, one right. was too long. Yeah, Do you well, know what I mean? I felt like, <coughs> I, I yes. think some people announced like almost three years, but Hillary right. Clinton announced like three years or something before. And, like, it was ridiculously long. And, uh, people were just done with it. And the 2012 election was I, abused by the Internal Revenue Service's manipulation of true. conservative groups. They helped elect Obama, a government agency. The Internal Revenue Service helped elect the president who was in office. Wrong, corrupt, criminal. Those people should be prosecuted. And they're still doing it, and they're still doing it. And I'm oh. telling you, that's not a fair election. 2014 is gonna be important too. We got to do something about the Senate. The Senate's completely out of trouble. Do you realize that the House has passed the budget every single year, and Harry Reid, who's in control of the Senate, has never passed a budget? He should be out of office. He should be impeached for maybe dereliction should, of duty. Maybe you should start small and run for like. Nobody's ever going to elect me. I am not electable. I have so much bag. Let me tell you something. I have so much baggage. I could keep journalists in books for the rest of my life. Okay, I have had Which such an amazing life. We'll keep them yeah, but so they would never <coughs> keep them so occupied with all of the baggage, and then you just say, "Oh, and by the oh, way, yeah. here's my platform. Elect me." Well, people I, will enjoy the baggage. Well, well, I, well, I think they would. Provide a good entertainment. Factor. I would be great entertainment, and I would tell you that I, not only I would I be a great candidate, and 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 would I be an honest elected official? Okay, because I'm I'm not a. I don't walk around with a mirror. I'm not in love with myself. And B, I care about these people. I care about them. Mm -hmm. But I answer to a higher calling, okay? And they're never going to elect me because I, you think they're afraid of Sarah Palin? They would be terrified of me because be I, I, I have, fact, because I would, get endorsements. I would get along with the press, you mm. see, because I'm one of them, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I know how they work and I know how they think and I know what they do. And I could, I could feed them stories forever. You know what I mean? And the other thing that would shake them up is the first time you lied about me, you know that seat that you have in the press room? First time you misrepresent what I said, you're out of there. It's up to me who comes in that room. Okay. And that's how I'm going to play. That's how I would play with the press. You guys square with me, I'm square with you. First time you're not, you're out. Go. I'm, I'm, anything you want, go talk someplace else. I'm really interested to see, you know, well, and then the, I felt that the, <clears throat> the 2012 election, at least the Republican Party, was such a hot mess. Right. You know, there really was a whole slew of morons that could have been a possibility. You know. And then you end up with Romney, right. and I don't... Who never fought back. Who right, never like, defended himself. Yeah, it, like, as much as Romney <clears throat> might have been a good guy, like, I yeah, just... Yeah, no, no, no backbone. Yeah, I was like, ugh. Yeah, we, we, we don't need milk toast. We need a leader. We, so, right now, we need a Reagan. We need a Sarah Palin. That, that's what we really need. And I know you never watched that tape, but I am telling you that if you ever <laughs> took the time to watch it, I you would see. It. You would see. Exactly where it's at. <clears throat> you would see why I say it. And let me tell you something. And they are scared to death of her. Both parties are scared to death of her, because she's like me. She doesn't take any prisoners. She tells the truth as she sees it, and she takes on all comers. And she, she talked about death panels. She was right. She taught everything she said about Obamacare was right and true. And, and there has been people, liberals, that have even come forward since then who have said she told the truth. She well, was right. Well, I'm just hoping that, you know, anyway. this, the 2016 election? 2016, be president. Yeah. That that one is <clears throat> at least hopefully it provides a decent entertainment entertainment factor. <clears throat> but I really what I really hope is that the, the both parties have all their ducks in a row and can pick a decent candidate. Well, we you would know? hope. Because I'm mean, like the the. Why would they bring out Hillary again? I. I mean, I, why would she's such a retread? And then you got Bill. People see everybody runs around. And they say how 
he's the most respected politician. No, no. Bill is a carnival act. Do you know what I mean? You bring him out when you want to have, you know, like we have the fat girl and we have the tall guy and we have the dwarf, we have Bill Clinton. We have, I mean, he's just another carnival act. He's a sideshow. Mm -hmm. And he did it to himself. And you know something? He might be bright, but he allowed himself to be manipulated into being the butt well, of jokes. Well, he's kind of straight. He, he's, he's kind of, it seems like he's kind of straight away from politics. He's got this Clinton Global Initiative <clears throat> thing, and he does more, he does, seems to be more, doing, Makes a lot focusing, of money. More, I don't know. focusing more humanitarian. That's what it, it's, the public image is. Lot, listen, I you got to have a reason like, to whatever. meet girls. Well, yeah. Okay, and that's, that's what he I, is. Maybe, he had to do something. Maybe Hillary's a lesbian. I don't know. I don't know. They said that she was going out with uh, Vince Foster, and uh, that's why he had to go. We won't go there. I'm not, I'm, I, I never, I, I never investigated into that. You know, I stopped. After all, all the stuff I saw down go down with JFK, <clears throat> and then Bobby, and then they killed John. They killed John Jr. He said he was going to run for Senate. He has an accident in the plane. Nobody says a word. Okay, they killed him. There was never any question that he was never going to be allowed because the first thing he would do as president is look into the death of his father. Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing with Bobby. Bobby didn't talk about the When he was running, he was running. He never mentioned the assassination. He never talked about it. And then somebody let slip, I think they did it on purpose, that that was his plan. Boom. And then they give me this, this, this lie about Syrian. Robert Kennedy was shot from the back by a guy in uniform right behind the ear. And that, all that Sirhan, Sirhan nonsense was to distract everybody's attention. Okay? So, I mean, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going there. I, I, I don't know much about that. I didn't investigate like I should have. Oh, let me tell you, <clears throat> let me just say one thing. Um, see, so we have done the first couple of Politics 101. We talked nice. a little bit about religion, too. Okay. Uh, that was last week was religion. This, this that's true. This week's roller coaster. I I want you to know that not everybody knows this, but in the many years ago, decades ago, <laughs> decades ago, I started running point of view roller coaster rides for people that couldn't get out. Maybe they were disabled. Maybe they they were afraid of going on rides like that. And I thought, wow, let me put them on TV so they could see what those rides were like because they can't go on them for shut-ins and folks like that. And I was the first person to ever do it. And I got I had a, got a great relationship with the friends at, at Cedar Point. They gave me a bundle of stuff and I've used it for years now. But I don't show reaction shots of people on the ride. Who cares? Right. I show you the ride. I want you to get the feeling of what it's like to ride the ride. And this week's show is going to close with the Raptor. This was an overhead coaster, okay? And, and, and I also have time-lapse photography of it being constructed. It's That's really, cool. really cool. But the thing about the overhead roller coasters is that you just hang, okay? So you're seated, your feet are, is it... So you're seated and your feet are dangling? Yes. Or there's a roller coaster in Six Flags Great America right. where it's called the Superman where you you're lay like down. strapped in and they pull you forward no. and then you fly like Superman. No, that came later on. That was like cool. the next generation. Yeah. Okay, this was revolutionary at its time. Okay, when your feet dangled over. And let me tell you, there's times when you lift your feet, you know what I mean? You're afraid. Yeah. You, you know? But the thing that I always thought was cool about it is when you're going up, they have... It doesn't drop off. It 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 had it looked like it was a roller coaster until you got to the top, and then it stopped. It didn't stop down here. So you had flooring under you the whole way up, and all of a sudden, wham! It's gone. Whoa! That was wow. uh, you know. So cool. so my, my my special thanks to Dan Fike who shot the stuff, uh, Cedar Point Amazement Park, and the Cedar Fair Company, uh, and uh, America's Roller Coast. Now we we still have to, we have about another minute we can talk, but I just wanted to make sure I. What's your favorite it. roller coaster you've ever been on? So far, the Mean Streak. We ran that a couple of weeks ago because I like wooden roller coasters, and I'm not into these. There's a place in Florida, Universal, and they got these, these roller coasters, and they slam you here and slam you there and slam. 
that's not I'm, that to me that's not entertaining. I like I like I want if you're gonna put me on a metal ride, I want a smooth metal ride, and I want airtime. I want to be off the seat, you know. Uh, so these hard slam them around rides, I'm not into that. The Mean Streak was the what was as a Cedar Point. We ran it a couple weeks ago. A wooden roller coaster. And it ch changes directions and everything else like that. And, you know, you're coming over to this side and it goes around. And I don't know how they get you back over here and so like, but just a great ride and it was long too mm -hmm. for a roller coaster. But just uh, so that, that's my favorite roller coaster to date so far. You know, cool. it was comfortable. So we have, wow, we're gonna get out on time. Fight America. Do something good every day and volunteer at your local animal shelter. That's right. Be good people and just uh, think for yourself. Don't even listen to me. Look stuff up.